This is part 22 of Razor Pages tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to implement delete operation in a Razor Pages project. Let's understand this with an example. Here's what we want to do. When we click delete button on any of the employees on the employee list page, we want to redirect the request to the delete confirmation page. And we want the delete confirmation page to look like this. So we want to display this message. Are you sure you want to delete employee? And then the name of the employee here, the name of the employee is John. So we display John. And then we also want these two confirmation buttons, yes and no. When we click yes, the respective employee record must be deleted and the request should be redirected back to the employee list page. And when we click no, the record must not be deleted. And again, the request should be redirected back to the employee list page. To support delete operation, we need delete method within our employee repository interface, iEmployee repository. This method is going to return the deleted employee object back. So the return type is employee and let's name the method delete. And to be able to delete an employee, we need the employee ID and the data type of employee ID is integer. And let's name the parameter ID. Our obvious next step is to provide implementation for this delete method within mock employee repository. We are still working with an in-memory list of employees within our application. At the moment, the list of all our employees are present in this private field underscore employee list. So first we have to find the respective employee by ID. So underscore employee list dot first or default employee where employee ID equals the incoming ID. Let's store the employee we have found in a variable. Let's name this variable employee to delete. If employee to delete is not null, remove the respective employee from the private field. And then finally, return the deleted employee. Our next step is to implement this delete confirmation page. We don't have this page yet, so let's add it to this employees subfolder in the pages folder. We want to add a razor page. Let's name it delete. We want to be able to data bind to the employee object that we want to delete. So let's include a public property of type employee. Let's also name the property employee. We don't have the required namespace. So let's bring that in. And let's also decorate this property with bind property attribute. Next, let's include a constructor to bring in employee repository service through dependency injection. The name of the interface is iEmployee repository. We need to bring in the required namespace as well. And then let's name the parameter employee repository. Let's also generate the required private field by pressing control period. Next, let's use this employee repository service instance to retrieve the employee that we want to delete. We do that inside this onGet method. On the employee repository, we have get employee method. And to this method, we need to pass the ID of the employee. The ID of the employee that we want to delete will be passed in the URL as a route parameter. So in the display template, let's include the ID route parameter. ASP.NET Core model binding will automatically map this ID route parameter value to this ID parameter on our onGet method. Let's also change the return type of this method to iActionResult and then pass this ID parameter to this getEmployee method. Let's store the result in this public property employee. If employee property is null, We have not found employee, so let's redirect the request to not found razor page. On the other hand, if we have found the employee, we want to re-render this delete razor page. Next, from the display template, let's bind to this public property employee. We want this h1 element to display the text delete confirmation. And then we want this bootstrap alert. So to get this alert, let's include a div element with bootstrap classes alert and alert-danger. 
Inside the alert, let's use an H5 element and then display this text. Are you sure you want to delete employee? And then we want to display the name of the employee whom we are deleting. So for that, let's use model.employee.name. Below this confirmation message, we want these two buttons, yes and no. And remember, deleting a record must be done using a POST request and never ever using a GET request. So let's include a form with method attribute set to POST. Inside this form, let's include a submit button and use the bootstrap classes btn and btn-danger for styling. The text on the button is yes. Finally, we need the second button, no. For that, let's use an anchor element and then for styling, use the bootstrap classes btn and btn-primary. And then when we click this button, we want to take the user back to the index page that displays the list of employees. The text on the button is no. When this button yes is clicked, the form is posted back to the server and we want to delete the employee record. So for that, let's include onPost method. This method is also going to return iActionResult and the name of the method is onPost. To delete the employee, let's use employee repository service delete method. To this method, we need to pass the ID of the employee that we want to delete. We can get that from the public property employee. If the delete operation is successful, this delete method will return the deleted employee. So let's store the deleted employee in a variable called deleted employee. If deleted employee variable is null, we have not found the employee to delete. So let's redirect the request to not found resume page. On the other hand, if we have successfully deleted the employee, let's redirect the request to index resume page. One final thing that we need to do is when the delete button is clicked, we want to redirect the request to the delete razor page. So let's include the required code on this index razor page that displays the list of all employees. Here is the delete hyperlink. We need both these tag helpers, ASP page and ASP route ID. So let's copy and paste them right here and then change the bits that are required. When this delete button is clicked, we want to go to the delete razor page and to it, we want to pass the ID of the employee to delete. With all these changes in place, let's run our project. We are on the home page. Let's navigate to the employees list page. Click delete. We see the delete confirmation page. When I click no, the employee is not deleted. On the other hand, when we click yes, the employee is deleted. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.